Hi everyone, welcome back. Good morning. I am Fifi McLeod and I'm Fifi the Paper Crafter across social media. I'm just going to give everyone a minute to come in and we'll get right into it. So today we're doing part 10 of our file folder folio. I'm just going to load our comments and our video. Perfect. Make sure my volume's off. There we go. And I'm going to tag a couple people. There we go. I'm going to give everyone a minute to come in. Hi, Selma. Hi, Kim. Thanks for joining. So I'm really excited, guys, for the next part, and I'm going to show you. So you can use anything, really, to, um, to bind a little journal. Um, my favorite method is using crochet thread. So I just wanted to show that. So it doesn't have to be um, wax thread. I mean, you can. You can... You could actually, with a one signature journal, sometimes I just take it like this, guys, and run the center fold right through my sewing machine. So I just wanted to share that. You could do like a cross stitch or a straight stitch, and you could stitch it twice through your sewing machine and call it good to go for a one signature journal like this that you're just going to put into um, the elastic, uh, the elastic um, spine. So I just wanted to share that. So there's so many options. But today we're going to do a three-hole pamphlet stitch, and I'm going to show you that. And I do mine a little differently because I just feel like mine's more, um, my way of doing it's a little bit more um, reinforced. So this is just a little little um, technique that I like to do. So I just wanted to share that. There's no right or wrong way. Um, it's not the traditional pamphlet stitch, though, so I just wanted to share that. So this is just my way of doing it. So just to show you another option. Because when I'm doing this, I like everything to be super reinforced and so nothing comes apart. Especially if you're gifting or you're selling journals. So I just wanted to share that. So I'm going to go ahead and I approx I just eyeball this, guys. There's no right or wrong way. I just, um, approximately, the, my middle is going to be here. So I take, I use um, Sizzix Stamper's Secret Weapon. So this is my favorite, like, pokey tool or all tool for putting the holes in because I have a this has a rubber grip on it and I have enough room between here and, and the actual um that's very sharp so I have enough room between here and here where I'm not going to slip with it um I know some people like to use an ice pick or they use um the wooden awls but I'm clumsy so yeah I'm accident prone <laughs> so I prefer this method so I just wanted to share that and I always get a really good um, like hole every time. So it's not too thick and it's not too thin. I find that to be like the perfect method. So I just wanted to share that. So I poked my three holes. They're right into the spine portion of my journal, if you guys can see that. And I'm just going to take a second. Hi, Morig. Hi, Linda. Hi, Maxine. Hi, Sue. Hi, Rachel. Thanks for joining, guys. So again, I like to, and there's no right or wrong way. You can do it that your tail is on the outside of your journal and hangs down, or you can do it that your tail is on the inside of the journal and hangs down. So for this um, tutorial, I'm going to do it on the inside. And that's usually what my preference tends to be. Um, so I just wanted to show that. So, But there's no right or wrong way. It's whatever your preference is. So I'm going through the middle this way. And then I'm leaving myself a tail. So a lot of the times what I will do, so this gets out of my, my immediate way, I will just clip that to um, my little clip there. So that I have a tail and then it's um, held down. So I just wanted to show that. And then when I go to the back, and you can go either way. You can go up or down. It doesn't matter. So then I'm going up through the top like this. I'm going to make sure that I'm pulling, let's see, there we go, pulling everything tight. Make sure you're tight, just like that. I'm going, so I'm, there we go. 
So then I'm up this way and I'm going back through my middle like this, through the middle. Sorry guys, I'm knocking stuff over. <laughs> there we go. Oh, what have I done here? There we go. Okay. And I see what I've done, guys. I have a little piece of string hanging. So I'm just going to... It's okay, because I. this is why I do it double. So see how I've done that? I've gone through my string. But that's not going to matter. I'm just going to clip it, because I reinforce it anyways. So that's another good reason for reinforcing it. So I just wanted to show that. So then I've gone through the center, and then I'm going through the bottom. Yeah, just like that. And then normally you would tie it off here, but I don't do that. I like to reinforce it twice. And it just ensures that if something happens to one string, you have a second string. So I just wanted to show that. So I'm going down through the middle like this. Well, we want to make sure that our, yep, our string's coming back through. Come on. Oh, I poked it through. No, I didn't want to do that. Sorry, guys, I made a knot. That always happens when we're live, right? <laughs> okay, what did I do? Then I pulled that back through. I created a knot. That's not going to matter. Yeah, my knot's through here. This needs to go back through my hole. Back to the center. I'll get this eventually. Sorry, guys. Never fails. Always happens when you're alive. Let's see if I can get that. It just looks like one of those little slip knots. Sorry, guys. See if I can just recover from this. If not, I'm just going to clip it and we'll start over. There we go. We recovered. Okay. Now let's get this string back through our hole. Here we go. Hopefully this is going to work. Um, oil spills. Just grab yourself another um, darning needle. Let me see here. And I want to share something really cool. My friend Tammy got me this for my birthday one of my birthday gifts and it looks like a lipstick but it's not a lipstick it's a little um pin cushion and it holds all kinds of needles that one's a little small um yeah that one should be good so I just wanted to share super cute right and it's good because then I don't have to worry about um my cat getting a hold of my needles or my my kids so it keeps them safe So now I can just thread this through. Hopefully this is going to work. That looks a little small. Come on. I should have a bigger needle in my desk. Let's have a little look. Yep, yeah, right here. Sorry, guys. Yeah, that's not going to go through there. Okay, let's try that again. So here we go. We're going to cut that again on an angle with our Tim Holtz scissors. 
and I'm going to use a darning needle and I'm going to thread it. <laughs> Good morning. Fifi's fighting with her thread. I like to use crochet thread because it's thick and it's not something that you can break in your fingers. So I just wanted to share that. That's why I like to use crochet thread. But really, you can use anything. Um, I've done um, a journal with using like a leather cord. There. And I'm just looking to go back through my original hole. There we go. And to pull that string back through here like, like so. There. So now we've got this back to where we need to be. Right here. Okay. And then where we left off is through the bottom. So now I'm going to go back through the top. There we go. Sorry, guys. That took a hot minute. Not everything goes as planned. <laughs> so I'd just like to reinforce it. So I'm going back up through the top. Like that. In through here. Down through the middle. Yeah, like that. There we go. Now you guys can see. And then back through the back to the bottom. Okay, and when I come through the bottom, I make sure everything's nice and tight. And I skip ahead. And I just go very carefully through here like this. Just like that. And I take my my two and I want to make sure that this goes underneath this way. Like this. If you guys can see that. There we go. So I've completely wrapped it around. And then I'm going to tie this in a double knot. One. And two. Like that. And then I trim them so they're about even and just out the bottom of the book. And then I can hang a charm or something else from there. So I just wanted to show that. There we go. So again, I've tied it in the center. I've gone and made a loop. So basically I want to make sure that I'm coming at the right at the bottom and out the left at the top so that you're around that whole entire thing and then you tie a double knot and then it hangs. And now I can take apart my my clips. I can pull them all off. Okay. And then we decide which way we want our actual book to go. So as you can see that's all good and it's going to sit flat like this. And I believe we are this way. Yep. Everything looks good. So again, you want to make sure before putting your signature together that everything is up the same way. Everything's up the same way and it's all facing the right way. Because I've done that before too, guys, where I put my actual pages in backwards. Or um, some of my pages in backwards. So you just always want to double check that before you sew your signature. And then all we, ha all we have to do is take our little booklet and we put it in. Just like that. And we're right in the center of our journal, just like this. And it's going to sit right here. So I'm super happy with that. And that looks good. So essentially you're going to want this whole side to be down flat. This goes here. And then this whole side is down flat and then goes here. So I just wanted to show that. So that's how it's going to look. So the next part, so that's our little journal in place. And again, you can go through and you can do stamping and all kinds of stuff over top of that. And I mentioned um, we've done that thick script stamping. So what I would do now is take, you can take, I'm um, just to give you an idea of what I like to do. And that's why it's kind of looks really loose like that. Then I could offset it with taking my archival ink which is going to give me a more fine detail and that same stamp and you just off off stamp it so then i could do it in black where it's off stamped and then it looks i'll show you uh papillion should be right here um yeah papillion right here so this is one of my favorite stamps um we're gonna get the ranger archival ink and I'm going to use some black because that'll make it stand out and be a little bit more bold too. Or I could use brown. So 
I'm just going to give this a really good ink. Like that. And I can already see that that's the first part of the stamp here, where I've stamped that. And I can off stamp, stamp it, so it's just um, like this. So if you guys can see that, that just gives it more detail. And same with here. that and just like that so it just gives it a little bit more detail and I could do the same thing here it's flipped through the other way but that's okay and just to offset it like this there we go so you're getting all that detail opposed to just the inking so I really like the look of that. So I just wanted to share that's where I was going with that when we created these pages. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I just need to give this another ink. Um, oh. I lost my page. Here we go. Right here. And I could do this in any color. I just wanted a dark one just to show you guys the difference. That's why I chose black. So again, I'm just going to kind of offset it where it's just right here. There we go. So you can just see all that fine detail on top of the inked area. So it's just super fun. Another way, great way to layer. So I just wanted to share that like in your mixed media. Um, now we're going to do the tickets. So from here, I am going to show you guys. This week I did some coffee dyeing and I used the Tim Holtz ticket booth. Um, yeah, his ticket booth tickets. There we go. Just gonna pull them all out. I did some other things as well, so I'm just gonna leave those in here for now. Because they're like some um little tabs and um um and I already put the one here. Um book pleats and things and little tabs. So I have these for um we can add them in um later once we get the other elements done. And I've done some frames too where we can add them in. So I just wanted to show that. That's why I did those. So I also have his ticket booth stamp set. So they kind of go hand in hand, right? So what I want to do is put that aside for now. Up here. Tickets are here and our stamps are here. Okay, so I'm going to need a block stamp. So I like one like this. That where I'm going to be able to easily take my stamps and put them on. So this one is a um, transport buses ticket. So it's like a bus ticket. Okay. And we're going to ink this up. So again, stamp my Ranger Archival ink. Sorry guys, there you can probably see what I'm doing. Then I just go in and I give it a really good, good ink. So I'm completely covered. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Michelle. Thanks for joining. So I'm going to want a ticket that looks like this. And then I'm going to offset it. And I'm going to... Yeah, that one's going to be this one, I believe. Yes. And I'm going to offset it like that. Make sure I have a really good stamp.
There. So that turned out really well. That's our first ticket. Right here. And then I have the other ticket. Because I can make these all different. I've done two of each. So that's... These two here are meant to be done on the one that looks like this. So I just wanted to show that. So it's also me showing you how to use these stamps and die sets. And they're a lot of fun. I love them for little ephemera pieces. You can use these in such a versatile set. Like I can use these in my slot pockets. I can use these in um, layering and collaging. There's so many things I can do. And I showed you guys those little containers that I have for sorting out all your bits. That's another thing I like to do. So you're coffee dyeing a bunch of your die cuts like this, and then you're stamping them in Ranger Archival. And it's just a way to create a cute little ticket. And then you could turn it over because it's cardstock and you could journal on the back. So I just wanted to share that. So they're great little tickets. And there's my next one. Okay. So I'm done with those two stamps. And I don't usually bother to, um, to um, clean my stamps if I'm just using Ranger Archival. If I'm using just Trust Ink, I will, because that tends to bleed once you, like it bleeds once you wet it. So I just wanted to share that. Okay, here's our next one, our number one. I'll do two of these. There we go. And then this one has a little tear spot. And we could do this one. to put more pressure down where the, the two is um, that way yep sorry guys so you can see there we go And then I have these smaller ones for the smaller tickets. One, two, three, and four. And we can just do like um, these longer ones like this one here. Paramount Theater. So this one here would be more of a theater ticket. Like right here. There we go. That's okay if they're faded a little bit. It happens. And I just embrace that imperfection. And then this one here is a Market Square Theater. Like that. Oh my. There we go. And then, my bit one tickets are here. Okay. Hi, Michelle. Thanks for joining, love. Hi, Sue. Thanks for joining. So these are my two admin tickets here, but I want to show you something really cool. So this is all part of the Tim Holtz um, ticket booth set, but the next one isn't. These ones are like um, one of the generic ones that I bought, but I want to show you something really cool. So even if you have um, a generic set, so you, as you can see guys, like 
I'll compare the size for a second. They're much smaller. So these are like a teeny tiny ticket in comparison. So even if you have something like this that's just generic and it's not um, part of any set, you can still use bits and pieces of your stamp sets to utilize these. So for example, I'm going to take my admin one ticket and do one of these. And now look, guys. Admit one. Admit one. Okay. Like that. Admit one. And admit one. There. And then I'm left with something that looks like this. So I just wanted to share. So again, same stamp and two completely different things. So I just wanted to share that. So there's so many ways that you can do these. So don't feel like if you don't have the Tim Holtz stamp sets, um, like the die cuts, you can always fussy cut these and make your own thing. And another great way to do that um, for making these corners is to take like um, a round circle punch and round circle punch your two edges. And then you can use like, um, if you have like um, peaking shears or if you have um, uh, some kind of decorative edge scissors. So I just wanted to share that. You could do that. I have the postal scissors set. So that's another great option if you don't have um, the die set. So I just wanted to share. Then we're going to take our, this is the fun part, guys. I'll put this all aside. I'm going to do this together. Okay. So we have our little booklet in here now. Super cute and fun. Then we're going to take our, our tickets and we are going to just slide them all in here. So there's our first one. I like how that sticks out. And the bigger ones I think I'm going to put closer to the top because they go down a lot further. I just wanted to share that and we can kind of offset things so I'm just going to play and I just have to be careful that I'm not catching anything I think I did that backwards didn't I no I didn't perfect okay just like that and I'm gonna have that sliding this way I'm gonna angle it a little better there we go then I'm gonna put this one here yeah kind of like this then I'm going to put this little one up here, right like that, like that. I have these teeny tiny little admin tickets. Uh, let's put admit one tickets. Let's put these. And let's make, yeah, see it's broken off. Okay, that's okay. But just improvise. Let's put it that way. Come on, slip underneath there. There we go. that and then how I've done it these are all like that as well they're not attached so I just wanted to share we've only attached them on here so we could get a good um, oops, a good stick oh, I just dropped my packing tape sorry guys um, but I want to I do want to do is reinforce this down right along here I've noticed that's come up so we're going to reinforce that down. Here we go. So I'm going to put my water bottle on there to hold it down while we figure out the rest of our tickets here. So I've got these two and I've got our theater ticket, our Paramount ticket, and the market theater. Okay. Make sure that has a nice stick down. We, yeah, we don't want that coming up at all. And then over here, um, yeah, we'll put this one going this way. And maybe even in behind. Here, we'll put that one in next. We'll do this this way. Yeah, where we're going. In. Yeah, and down like that. And that one will go back here. Yeah, right here. There we go. And this one. Yeah, 
theater tickets. This one can go right in the center like that. Okay, right like this. And then we have this one here like this, like this. See, that's perfect. Or admit one. I get probably that way. There we go, and that's stuck down now. And we have these tiny little admit one tickets that we can put here. And I'm just gonna fold that in half and tuck it in. Whoops, right here. There, so I just wanted to share that. I'm super happy. And that's how I would use Tim Holtz um, ticket booth. I'll bring it up a little closer so you guys can see. And they're all in there. And the recipient of this journal can either leave them in there or they can pull them all out and use them in, in their mix. So it's just a super fun way to um, um, to in include these little um, tickets. And the other thing you could do too, if I wanted to, I could ink them all up like the outer edges um, with the distress ink. But I think by the time that we just um, add our Ranger archival to them, they look amazing. And they're all coffee dyed, so they all have like a different... Um, sort of hue to them in terms of um, where I've layered the coffee on. So I just wanted to share that. So super fun. And then I can stamp something here. Um, I have Tim Holtz field notes in front of me. So let's see here. Um, I like that right there, field label. We could do that. Shipment collect. Actually, let's do this one. I haven't used this stamp yet. So I have this one here that says collect. And this is another fun way to use your stamps. So I'm going to show you guys. Here we go. So I'm going to come into my ink like this. And I'm only going to ink up part of that stamp. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to stamp that right across here. There. And then my little pocket says collect 685 and it has some writing on it. So super cute. And it's just a fun way to, to do that. And I could ink it up to make it a little bit more bold. I could color in the collect. I could even um, heat emboss that if I wanted to. But I think it's cute the way it is, and I've done all the mixed media on this page. Okay, so that's it for our pocket. And then, now guys, we're going to do um, the cabinet card. And then I haven't decided if I want to put the cabinet card here, or if I want to put it in the pocket. And then we're going to come back next week and do the cover, and we're done. So I'm super excited. And um, I'm going to share a little tidbit, because I know a lot of people really enjoyed this project. And guys, as I told you, file folder journals are my favorite thing to do. And I have three more tutorials coming. So we're not done with the file folders yet. So I'm super excited. So it's going to continue. <laughs> it is going to continue. And um, the next one we're doing will be Shabby Chic. So I just wanted to share that. So it's a little tidbit of what's coming next. And we'll be doing um, cabinet cards and some different things. So I'm super excited. And I'm going to have a kit for that one too. So I'm going to, um, that'll be my project share for that one. Okay, so we have our cabinet card. So what basically all this was, guys, super simple. I had to cut two of these slot pockets out. So that's what these are. My two slot pockets that cut out of here. And then all I did was just cut around them in an even frame. And then um, make it look like... Um, a bottom piece for a cabinet card. So I just wanted to share that. That's how simple these were. So this is my back side. So I want to make sure that I am gluing the back side. Oh, thank you so much, Thelma. I'm so glad. So this is going to be the front. And then I'm using a page for my vintage field notes. Um, uh, digital kit and I created that one to be panels of four and a half yeah four and a half and four and a half instead of eleven so you have basically on every page a section that cuts off 
because these are meant to be panels and the panels are perfect for your file folder journal projects and they're also perfect for um, a traveler's notebook size or um, like a field study, <clears throat> sorry guys, <clears throat> a field study journal. So I just wanted to share that. So that was my reasoning for making it that size. And then this is going to be perfect for me to just come in like this on my panel. So this is cardstock. So I just wanted to share. And you can put anything in here, guys. You can put, um, you can put vellum, plastic, like, like, um, plastic packaging, all kinds of things. You can make it into a pocket. I'm not going to make this one into a pocket. This one's just going to be a straight, um, a straight cabinet card. It's just a generic way of making them. So there's so many things that you can do. So I'm just using a piece of cardstock. So this is going to be a little thicker because this is going to be three pieces of cardstock, essentially. Um, the two frame pieces and then this one. So now I'm just going to take this and I'm going to trim it. Sorry guys, I was losing my voice there for a second. It's just really warm in here this morning. I think it's going to be um, 13 or 14 degrees today, so it's going to be really warm. So I'm really excited for that. It's finally warming up. Okay, so that's our front, and we're going to flip it over, and then this is our back. So, and that's the thing too. It's entirely up to you. If you wanted it to be double-sided, you absolutely could do that. I could also glue it where the back part of it is a tuck spot. So I could take something like, um, let me see here. So this is what I've used for alcohol ink for stamping off. So you could take it where you're sliding this piece in and out. So you glue it like that, and then you could slide this in and out. So I just wanted to share. That's another way to do it. I could stitch the whole thing, which I probably will do off camera, and then we'll come back um, for next week. So you guys let me know. I'm not sure exactly what I want to do yet, but one thing I do want to show you is, again, one of my favorite things to do. So with this, we're going to go back in with our papillion stamp here because this is again one of my favorites and I'm going to ink this up but I don't want to ink it up in black I want to ink it up in brown ranger archival so I'm just going to come in with a paper towel doesn't matter and I'm just going to off stamp so that's again my favorite way just to make sure that we've gotten all the superficial stuff off of our stamp so the only time it matters to use stamp cleaner is if I'm going to do something fun like go from Ranger Archival ink to um, lift ink. So it's the the lift ink for alcohol inks that's going to take the Ranger Archival ink off my stamp. So um, the only time that I would clean that is if I'm going into 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 that ink if I'm doing the, um, the alcohol ink stuff. Whereas um, if I'm going to distress, the distress ink is not going to take the Ranger Archival ink off of my stamp. So that'd be the only time I'd use a stamp cleaner. So just wanted to share that before and after using alcohol lift ink. And then maybe switching from your Ranger Archival ink colors. But that's okay. I'm going from black to, uh, let's do vintage photo. Here we go. Vintage photo. And that's okay. I'm just going to come right in and ink this up. Okay. Perfect. And then I'm going to come right across here like that and like this. A little like that. Perfect. And I'm going to give this right here, here. Now, the other thing I might want to do too is cover this. So here's a little trick. Okay. While I'm stamping, 
I can offset and I'm going to want to stamp it this way. I'm not going to want to stamp it that way because it's got to be um, the, the lettering has to be the right way all the time. So I'm just going to do one of these and then I can come right in here and choose which part of this stamp I want to do. So like right here. There we go. And it's perfect and I didn't get any on my cabinet card. And same thing here. A lot of the time I can pretty well eyeball it, but when it's a really small surface like that, you want to use something like a masking or a paper towel. And I just find it to be quick and easy if you use something like a paper towel. There, and I just want some of that beautiful script. Perfect. So essentially that's what my cabinet card now looks like. With just a little bit of script stamping. So something so simple and it just makes it pop. So I just wanted to share that. And then I might not feel like it's totally done from there. I can go in with my Distress Inks. Right in front of me, sorry guys. Here we go. So I'm using my Vintage Photo Distress Ink. And I did this one in um, the Ranger Archival. Vintage photo ink. So it's the same color, but you get the two different effects. So the distress ink will go to the background every time, and your Ranger Archival ink will pop up to the top. And I could even come in a little bit further just to make it a little bit more grungy like this. Yep, and like that. Just to give it that little something, maybe a little bit darker than the tea dye. Okay, just like that. So I'm super happy with that. And if I wanted to, too, I could take a stencil to this and I could add some stenciling in there. But I think this is perfect for what we're going to do. And then, so if we were going to glue this down here, we could do this right like this. Or if we wanted it to be like a journaling card or a cabinet card, um, we could go as far as putting the back on it, making it um, like a back pocket, and then putting it into here. So you guys let me know where you want this to go. We can add it to the, okay, let's add it to the, um, the folder, the folder pocket, which is this one, or attach it to the panel. So folder pocket or panel. And then this will decide where we're going next. But I'll let you guys decide. So this might not take the first comment. Add it to the folder pocket. Okay. So then we're going to get a piece of plastic packaging or acetate. And I happen to have one right here. This has a weird sticker on it. But this is going to be perfect. That might not even, yeah, that'll be perfect like that. Okay, so what we're going to do. So if we have our front like this. I'm going to glue around my sides, so to, um, like this, on the side, and you want a really good stick, like that, on the side, on here, because you're not going to see this, this is going to be blocked by the cabinet card, right? So I just wanted to show that. Now, this is two pieces, so I just wanted to show what this is. This is like one of those things that held a bunch of stencils. So when it goes like that, it actually opens. So it's like a pocket, okay? So I just wanted to show that. This is two pieces of plastic. It's not one solid sheet. So I'm going to get a pocket out of this. And then I'm going to put this down here. Like this. That's why I love to save my packaging. And I love to save my, um, like what's the, some of the stuff that I throw in the recycling usually, right? 
Okay, because it makes all kinds of neat stuff. Okay. Now I'm going to need my bone folder. Yep, right here. There we go. Just to make sure we have a nice stick. And we're going to do both. We're going to cut this at the side. Just like this. And just like that. We're going to, I'm not going to discard this because I can use this for something else. I'll put that aside. So now we have this here that opens at the top and the side. So we're just going to leave that be. And then what we're going to do is, yep, here's the other piece of our cabinet card, like this. And we're going to glue this here. Um, actually, before we glue it, yeah, let's do the same thing. So I'm going to set that aside here, let it dry. And we can, we can do the same thing. So same thing, we're going to add our archival ink. There we go. And then we don't have to worry about that so much because we are not on anything. We can just go ahead and do our stamping. So that's the other thing too. If you wanted to avoid that, you just have to, yep, do one of these on your glass media mat before we actually put it on there. Oh, I can get some... There we go. Perfect. So there we go. And we'll ink it up. And this way too, we can ink up the inside. Make the whole thing pop. Here we go. Sorry guys. This is my favorite way of making different cabinet cards. And different things and you can use anything you can also you can use old photographs um, you can use digitals and printables so many things you can add specimens to this make your own specimens you can use stickers like you can get those transparencies you can use like Tim Holtz vellum scenes there's so many things that you can do with the cabinet cards and it's so much fun you could do stamping I'm going to be having a whole series on alcohol inks and the different things that you can do with them. And that's going to be a big thing too, making different, um, different junk journal makes and things with your alcohol inks. And I have his uh, Duralar and the Duralar is like a transparency and it's amazing because I'm going to be showing all kinds of things. It's also, um, not only is it for your like archival for your, um, your alcohol inks, but it's also heat resistant. So you could heat emboss it. So that's the other super fun thing about it. Because most plastics you can't. Most of the plastics are, um, like they melt when you add um, heat to them. So I just wanted to share that. That was one of the main reasons why I really want to give that a go. Because could you imagine, like this is kind of my thought process for that too. Um, heat embossed with black um, his big butterfly set and his moth set and then you can color them in with the alcohol inks to make like a stained glass window so there's so many things that I want to try and that's kind of um, one of them here we go and this should be perfect to hear you guys can see that so I have all kinds of ideas I just need to do videos and execute it <laughs> there we go Here we are. But yes, cabinet cards. It's funny because this is one of the first things I ever made for my junk journals. Was cabinet cards. There's a billion ways to do them. There's no right or wrong way. I could have just attached this flat to my book and called it a day. And said, okay, the back of it is a journaling card. And then what we want to do too is... I'm going to be pulling some kind of a piece to slip in and out of here. And then I want to make sure that this remains open 
but that my transparency or my um, my piece of plastic packaging lines right up with my yeah, with my um, with my edge here. There we go. And there's a little bit of a gap between this edge, yeah, and then the other edge, because that's not going to be glued down. That portion of it, it's only going to be glued to here. Yeah, like that. This part here is going to be left open. There we go. Just like that. And I'm going to stitch around the whole thing to close that pocket. So I just wanted to share that when you're doing like plastic, you're going to want to reinforce um, anything that you've glued with, with stitching. So I just wanted to share that. So I'm really happy with that. It's super cute, right? There's the front and that's going to go into our book and then there's the side. And the other thing we can do, we can take our, our, um, crocodile. And we could set an eyelet in there if we wanted to. Sorry guys, I just don't have my eyelets handy. They're hiding. <laughs> but yeah, in the corner, if you wanted to put an eyelet, you could put one here, take a bulb pin, and then you can dangle some kind of like a key or a little Tim Holtz charm or something on there. So there's so many things that you can do. There's no right or wrong way, and um, there's a billion ways to do that. And that's what we'll do when I... I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's all done. And then um, the only other, other thing I would say is just make like a tag for here. So just measure this. So my kind of rule, um, my little rule for making these would be to um, have it about almost an eighth of an inch smaller where you can just slip it in. So then you kind of see where the glue goes. Sorry guys, I'm covered in glue on each of the sides. So... I would do it like inside the frame actually like that so just maybe a little bit more like that so this would be about uh, yeah just a little over three so three and a quarter I would say it would be, would be about the perfect spot for that and then do it the um, we glued it here so you didn't have to do that we could have glued it like this so the whole thing went all the way down but it doesn't it only goes to here so just make it the the size of this so again, it just depends on where you've glued. So four, um, I and then if you want it to stick up a little bit, that's fine too. So I'd even say four and a quarter by, um, by three and an eighth, an eighth of an inch. So three and 3.5 or whatever. So that's what I would do. So I just wanted to show that. And then when it's done, it's going to slip perfectly right in here, just like that. And we can put it that way. Or we can turn around and put it this way. Okay. So there's our cabinet card. And that's going to go into our pocket here. And it books it up a little bit. And um, then we're going to come back. And you can also do a booklet for in there if you wanted to. And then we put a tag in there. So then when we come back, we're going to do this panel. And we're going to do our front cover. Whoops, sorry guys. See, it has to go like that. There we go. Our front cover and then our inside panel so I haven't really thought too far ahead yet I'm not sure what we're gonna do there but we will figure it out I like the slot pocket though it's super cute and it's just a fun way to to add that element so I'll come back next week with a plan for the panel and we'll decorate our front cover so the other idea that I had um, and I liked that. I liked that because we have this gap here. We're going to create a faux file folder look. So we're going to have a faux piece of a file folder and I'll show you how to make that. And we're going to attach it right here and it's going to stick out so that it, it compensates for, for that slope. So you're not going to have a slope. You're not going to see it. Um, just like my other one. Um, I can show you guys. I mean, that's what we'll do here. We'll do the double library pocket. That's actually a great idea for here. Um, we'll do this one here, the double library pocket, next week, just like how I did here, like that. 
and we'll put that here so we'll customize it for here and then we'll do the front and um, we'll do some kind of a clock I'm I don't like to repeat myself completely so we'll do something a little bit differently but our hands will still move so we'll do something a little bit differently for the front but I do like the clock and we'll do some sort of like a book plate here with our name of our journal so I'm really excited for that we'll do that and then that that's what we'll do put the double pocket here okay so I'm super happy all right guys thank you so much for joining me today this is coming along so well and as I mentioned uh, we're just about done there's probably one more video left I would think and um, when I come back we'll finish it next week and we're gonna start a new project and I'm super excited so like I said this is gonna be a file folder series so this is just the first of a few so I just wanted to share they're so fun and there's so many different ways and different elements and different things that we can use. So this is kind of like going to be a little mini series. I'm so excited. Oh, thank you guys so much. I appreciate everyone here, all the support. I, I love seeing your makes and the journals that you've made based on my tutorial. It's so amazing. So yeah, guys, um, I'll be doing another giveaway. So I think maybe we'll do that over the next couple of projects. Um, I'm going to take down all the names of everyone that makes um these projects and then we'll we'll do a kit giveaway because again i'm fifi the paper crafter and i'm fifi mcleod across social media and um, my facebook group is fifi the paper crafters creative community and i'm a digital designer my my kits are in my etsy shop at um fifi's digital designs on etsy so i just wanted to share that so if you're looking for a kit that's where they are. And I like to keep them affordable, guys. Mine are about $8 Canadian, so it's not too, too bad. So just wanted to share. Mine are, like, not on the on the um, the higher end. They're, all, like, you know, uh, on the medium. And I'm just getting started with it. I started creating the kits in 2001. So I just wanted to share that. Thank you guys so much. Have a fabulous week, and I'll be back soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye.